This never gets old. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another awesome episode of Railroads Online. My name's Evil One, and in this episode, we are up here at the coal mine, as you can see. We got Beast warming up over here. I just finished uh, in the last time I was up here, or playing the game, rather. I just finished uh, filling up this coal car and offloading the beams I brought up here. So, we want to start up here because I did make a couple of changes up here, and we also have some announcements to talk about. So as you can see here, we'll get to the announcements in just a second. As you can see here, I straightened out this section of track. I added another uh, rail yard lane. These aren't the greatest. I kind of whipped them out kind of fast. Uh, but the big thing is over here. As you can see there, I actually put in one of these little train houses. Put in some awesome little stops right here. These, of course, are not the ones I built down at the smelter station. Uh, these ones are just the normal kind that I've been doing. I don't know if I like those ones down there. So I have a switch here. And it goes to a little round table. And into the little house. Currently, there's no locomotive in there. And I figure one day when I actually have some money, I'll bring up a little switching locomotive. And it can perform menial tasks up here as needed. I did run into a problem. One of the main reasons why I redid all this up here, I was actually trying to back up this hill. I had Beast down the hill around the corner, and I was trying to offload in reverse for some reason, and it kept on uh, breaking. Oh, that's what it was. I was trying to hook up to the rail cars that were here uh, from a long time ago. I had a couple of cars that were stored in one of the old rail lan lanes here. And I, I was having a hard time backing up to that quirky little S-bin thing that was going on. Beast was down the hill, and I kept derailing, so I just said, screw it, and redid it all. Rerailed all the cars, of course, and, and got it going. So up here, we have no beams. I've been running beams up here like crazy. We have 429 coal, and... 30 out of 60 rails. And this is the new train that I've been running. Uh, with just one uh, hopper car of coal. So I definitely don't want to be driving all the way back empty handed. And a whole bunch of these 200 series bringing nothing but rails up here, or uh, beams up here. Every once in a while I'll bring one up of rails and uh, keep going that way. Uh, I obviously did remove a bunch of trees up here too, just because these views up here never get old. We got our line down there, and it goes off around the bend, and that awesome waterfall. Okay, let's talk about these updates really quick. This is more like an update and an announcement. It says, uh, new build 220221, main, main and beta branch. Again, we are still on beta. So the change log, and they adjusted the coupler's draw bars to improve coupler stability when going around tight curves. I think that was actually part of the beta back uh, before they went live with everything. I think that got left out or something. Uh, then they went on to add a unique world idea saved to the save game when there is none yet. This is part of the announcement portion. It says, currently the new spline system is under development. Therefore, the coming beta branch update is going to include a pre-made rail track along with a simple train setup. They went on to say, we opt for the following benefits with this new system. They fix the bouncing client cars when driving or riding trains. That must be for multiplayer. I think I heard about the, uh, the issue if you're a client, you know, you're playing on somebody else's world while they are, you know, hosting it. Uh, you see some crazy things with the trains jumping off the track and you know flip doing flips in the air and that sort of thing It says better FPS performance for server and client Speaking of which right now. I do have a FPS counter up in the upper right hand corner You can't see it, but I'm getting exactly 60 frames per second. It sets unlimited But that's what I'm getting standing right here down at the smelter station, I did get about 25 on average. Sometimes it drops a little lower than that. Sometimes it goes up to like 40. But I think it depends really what I'm looking at and what's there, you know, where it is and that sort of thing. So I believe it's the rail and the rolling stock and the, the cargo in the rolling stock 
that's causing those issues. So hopefully they can get that fixed. I played around with adjusting my graphics settings and honestly it's not worth it. I'd rather have uh, better visuals than just a periodic uh, time where the frame rates drop for a few seconds. It's not that big of a deal to me. So uh, the other thing they added was longer trains. They added higher speeds for all trains. So that's good. Especially coming all the way out here to the coal mine. It takes about 21 minutes with Beast pulling that train from the time I leave the smelter station to the time I set the brake. 21 minutes to get up here. And it's pretty much 100% reg the entire way. So that's good that they're going to speed it up. Uh, they had longer splines and easier spline handling. And uh, he said, we will inform you about the coming release date of the new beta branch version. Thank you. Well, no, thank you, devs. Really do appreciate it. Anyway, let's get on with it. I This is going to be a really fast, uh, quick update kind of episode, but I kind of just want to take you around the curve here. I'm going to get back down to the smelter station, and I'm not going to force you guys to watch that. Uh, if you... I just pushed the F button. I've been playing uh, Derail Valley. If you haven't seen that video yet, go check it out. I just posted it today. Uh, where I, you can like shoot forward uh, using the F key and I'm kind of used to that now a little bit so coming back into this game it's uh, it's kind of slow moving around it seems like so alright let's get the door open here get the window open here we should have plenty of pressure back out of our views there we go we'll go reverse or forward break off give it just a little bit of regulator such a pretty train though one thing that derail valley doesn't have going for it is the graphics like it's really good but they need to take a few uh pages out of the developers of railroads online's notebook because <laughs> this is a just a beautiful game compared and you know the developers for railroads online they need to pay attention to what dv is doing with their uh, physics and their their train controls and that sort of thing. So, I like them both so far. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of Railroads Online, but DV, uh, D Derail Valley is really cool. So you can see this corner right here is really close to the track. I had to bring it in as close as I can to get it to fit right. We'll stop here and take a look. We cleared just fine. I haven't had any kind of collisions yet, so we'll go reverse or stop, brake, stop, Let's jump out really quick and take a look. So it's all nice and aligned with this turntable. Well, it was. <laughs> so basically, uh, and I got it up on the foundation, so it's all the same level. We don't drop down at all. You can see the foundation wall there. I think I removed the trees out of here. I placed it down. Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we just uh, pull out and we can opt to go straight if we wanted to, or, you know, angle it just a little bit, I think. I actually haven't had a locomotive in there yet at all, so. All right, let's head on down the hill. Go break off. Regulator, let's give it some gas. We'll get going here. Don't need to go banging through all these switches at full speed. Boy, that's just an awesome sight. It's one thing about the Derail Valley games, they got some pretty cool views, but their uh, trees and stuff are right on the track. And so far, there's not very many steam locomotives at least I haven't I've only seen one I went over and took a look at it but I couldn't like climb in it because I don't have the right license for it or whatever so which is unfortunate we actually don't need to go creeping down this we can go pretty quick I found out
So yeah, I've just been buying, rolling stock. Oh, let's take a look at uh, my money. We have $924. And that's because I'm getting $25, I believe, per carload of beams delivered up here, which is just pennies for the amount of work that it takes to bring them from the sawmill to the smelter station, get switched together into a train heading for up here to bring down one load of coal. But I have been buying rolling stock. I've been buying a whole bunch of these cars, these 200 series uh, flat state cars. And I bought a bunch more hoppers. So I got a bunch of hoppers already filled up with coal. I believe some are down at the smelter station. And the others are actually up, up, up at the freight depot already. Waiting to head on to the ironworks whenever we get a line built there. That's going to be coming up here hopefully soon, maybe in a week or two. Again, I'm in no real rush. I'm having a lot of fun just running these trains, though it does uh, get monotonous. I am looking at some other projects as far as uh, removing trees over by the, the freight depot. We'll go take a look at that in just a little bit, which is ironically just on the other side of this mountain right over here. Right in front of us. I'm watching this train really close now because last time I came down here like this about this fast I derailed the last car flipped off the track I was just kind of keeping my eye on it fortunately I can't see it through the trees let's go count One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, we got all of our cars. Let's just ride back here for a while. We got the regulator at 100%. We should be able to climb anything. And uh, going down is pretty straight, so... No real major curves or anything when we go down. There is a couple of S-bends at the top of the hill. But I've hit those at full regulator before. I haven't had a problem. So I'm going to risk it and just ride back here.
All right, and the locomotive is breaching the switch. We should probably start heading back. That was a lot of fun. You know, it uh, it's kind of nerve wracking at times <laughs> to sit here and watch the entire thing. But it's nice and quiet. So that's, that's kind of nice. Just kind of sitting back there chilling, watching the, the whole train. So all right, I'll cut here. You guys have seen this part a gazillion times. Nothing has changed. So I'm going to cut it here and we'll meet you back down at the smelter. And by smelter, I mean, of course, the freight depot, because why not? I did get beast over to the, the smelter and I parked it. But the next thing I wanted to show you guys is actually over here. Kind of the next little update thing that I did. And it's just right up here on the corner. So as I said in the intro, I've been driving trains and loading trains and cutting down trees. And this is the part where I've been cutting down trees. As you can see, I've been busy cutting down trees. <laughs> I don't even want to speculate how many hours I have cutting down all these trees, but I figured this is a mountain valley. It's nice and flat. It's got some little bit of undulation to it, you know, some ups and downs. I'm going to put in, well, my initial plan was I was going to put in a huge we're talking massive rail yard right here. But after the FPS drops at the smelter station, I think those plans have kind of changed. Still want to put in a little rail yard, maybe not as big as I was imagining. But this is a mountain valley, and they would have logged the valleys. And this actually looks a lot like where I live currently. I live up in the mountains. I live like kind of on the edge of a valley in the trees and the valley below is completely bare looks just like this minus the you know obvious straight line of trees right in front of us this is kind of where I stopped I discovered if I hold down let me go into here if I hold down the logging tool I don't have to click each tree which really helps. I can just hold down the left mouse button. Let me show you. I just hold down the left mouse button and run through the forest. I'm not clicking each tree. I'm just kind of looking at it for a second. And the trees fall behind me. So it makes it a little bit faster. My finger was starting to get a little worn out. <laughs> I think that my new mouse is getting a little worn out too. But yeah. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, you know, like I said, I was going to try and keep this video short. I have no idea how long it's actually going to be. Uh, but if you enjoy this content, please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I'm Evil One for Ramblin' Road and we will catch you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye for now.